Hello, my name is Cristiano Menezes, and I work for the Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation, where I work with stingless bee biology and also develop techno technologies for their management. Uh, I thank you very much for the organizers for inviting me for this beautiful event, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Brazilian stingless bees. So stingless bees belong to a tribe called Meliponini, but they are well known as stingless bees. And before you ask, how did we remove their sting? Actually, these bees, they lost their ability to sting along their evolution, millions and millions of years ago. But they, it doesn't mean that they don't have defensive systems. They do have. They generally use their sharp mandibles to bite their enemies, which can be actually very annoying, but there is a huge variation on their behavior. Some species are completely shy and very, very gentle. Others are completely aggressive and uh, can, can be very, very annoying. But what I can say is that, is that we have a huge variation in behaviors, in their shapes, their colors. Some are very tiny, hard to see, and others are sometimes bigger than the honeybees. They occur in all the tropical and subtropical areas of the globe, in South America, Central America, until Mexico, but also in Africa, Asia, and Oceania. We have about 550 species in the world, and Brazil has almost half of all these species. They are eusocial insects, which may, means that they uh, make colonies full of individuals. Some species make smaller colonies with a few dozen bees, but others can make very, very big nests with over thousands and thousands uh, of bees inside a single nest. We can produce them, use them to produce honey in large scale, but also increase the amount of harvest managed in the same area. We can split nests. And I can say that in Brazil, we have about 60 species that we already manage in large scales. And we, don't, we do not need to go to the field to collect, collect wild nests for, for these beekeeping practices. So what I can say nowadays in Brazil is that our beekeeping, stingless beekeeping is completely sustainable in terms of not needing to uh, access the wild nests for developing the activity. We have very efficient techniques nowadays to split their nest and increase the, the activity, the productivity, and also the, the, uh, the scale of production with these bees. The honey, of course, is the main uh, valuable product of these bees, the, the most wanted and the most important for the activity. And each species will produce a different honey. Uh, each one has its own peculiarities, its own characteristics of flavor, of aromas, and, and each one is very special. Most of them are very liquid, and generally they are more sour than the honeybee honey, the conventional honey that we are used to. Uh, these features come from two different mechanisms that are involved in uh, stingless bee honey production. The first one is fermentation. As you can see in the picture, when we open the food pots, the honey pots, we will always see this foam on the top of the honey, which means that this is being fermented. Because it has more water than honey bee honey, it generally ferments naturally with their own microorganisms, which are beneficial. Actually, they may be adding important substances like antibiotics and also changing the aromas and the flavor of this honey, mostly to conserve this honey to be eaten by the bees later. Uh, but there is a second process that is storage in, in these honey pots, which are made of wax plus resins from plants, propolis. So this these works like a barrel, like in wine, they, with time, they will give aromas to the honey and will change its flavor. So with time, the honey will get identity and the aroma of that colony. That is different to, of comparing to the honeybees who use only pure wax to store their honey. 
So because of that, because of these two process fermentations and aging in, in these honey pots, in these barrels, we have very peculiar uh, products, products uh, which are completely different from one species to another. We have some species which produce very sour honey, sometimes uh, acid like vinegar, others that produce soft honeys, very sweet and very delicate, and others with bizarre uh, aspects. For example, one species in Brazil that produces a salty honey with smells of cheese. So uh, each one will produce a completely different one, and this is a universe to explore. Stingless bees can also be managed for, uh, hunt, for pollination. So most species can be uh, taken to the crops and will help to improve uh, agriculture in general. In this case, for example, with strawberry, we use a tiny bee called Jatai, who can not only increase the size of the strawberry, as you can see in the picture, and the shape, but improves its quality and even the shelf life of these strawberries. Uh, they also can help important crops, big large scale crops like coffee and where they increase productivity, but also the size of the seeds. And because of that, they stimulate the farmers to diminish the use of pesticides or if they need to use, they generally use it carefully when they have contact with bees and they know their importance for their own production. We have another case in Brazil, in Amazonia, with acai berries, where we found that managed bees do not solve all the pollination problems. We need to conserve the environment around the crops to have all the pollinators around, all the diversity that is necessary to have a good harvest in acai berry. So for many crops, it works like this. So stingless bees and bees in general are, are helping to convince the farmers that conserving natural areas, natural habitats around their crops will benefit the bees, but also will benefit himself because he will harvest much, much more than comparing if he would clean all the area to have uh, a unified crop in this place. Stingless bees are also very interesting for education because they don't sting children can get close to them. We can open the nest, harvest the honey with them and have a nice experience looking inside the colonies, how they behave, how they, they organize their, their societies. So for, for this purpose, bees are being used around Brazil very successfully. This is one example where children can uh, actually see the bees, have a contact with them. And in the end, they, they get a trap nest uh, to, to try to, to have their own nest at home. So this is one of the initiatives that we are seeing in Brazil, but this is happening everywhere in Brazil nowadays. Uh, many people are also having bees at home, like this guy that has about 40 to 50 hives in, in the center of Sao Paulo city, in the balcony of his apartment at the 15th floor. So he has these bees because he wants to help to, to save them and to conserve them, but also for hobby and actually um, most of the times just to have them as pets. And the good thing is that even children like my daughter that you are seeing in the, in the picture with two, when she was two years old. And actually nowadays, the difficult part is to keeping her away from the bees because she wants to harvest the honey every day. So it's very good to have the bees at home with your family and they will enjoy this activity as well. These are, all, uh, are also becoming famous in Brazil. The stingless bees are going to very important shows on TV, radios, magazines. So many people are talking about them and each day they're becoming more, more and more popular, even in programs at TV that we would never expect to see bees around with, with, with the program. Uh, for you to have an idea about the success, 
recently in the beginning of the pandemic, we, 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 we launched a, a course, a B course online, a stingless bee course, uh, teaching basic things about stingless bees and how they could manage them. And we had very quickly around 45,000 people watching this course. This course was made by Embrapa, where I work in collaboration with uh, an association. It's called Associação Abelha that we have in Brazil. So together we made this course and was extremely successful. And we were really impressed with how many people were interested in this activity. And what we, to close, the, to, to get the conclusion of this talk, I would like to say that these stingless bees are actually uh, helping us to have a better agriculture, a better look at the environment. And it has a promising future for sustainable development because it can generate incomes to many people based on the forest. We don't need to cut the forest to generate income. So this is the most important and relevant thing about the stingless bees. We are helping to conserve them, but they are also being important for the societies that live close to them, even inside the cities, as I showed to you for you today. I thank you very much for the attention. And uh, once again, I thank the organizers for inviting me for this talk. Thank you very much.